Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about pseudo cowpox in cattle. And pseudo means false, so another name for pseudo cowpox is false cowpox. Um, pseudo cowpox is the most common infectious cause of teat disease in cattle. Um, it's a mild infection of the udder and teats in cows. In some cases, it could also be um, seen in sheep. Um, pseudo cowpox is caused by the parapox virus, and it should not be confused with regular cowpox, which is a very rare disease that shows more lesions on the teat and udder. Um, cowpox used to be a big issue many years ago, um, but today it's pretty rare. Um, the parapox virus is an oval-shaped, relatively large, double-stranded DNA virus. It has a unique spiral coat that distinguishes the virus from all other um, pox viruses. Um, it infects vertebrae, including a number of mammals and humans. And here's just a picture of the virus. You can't really see <laughs> the spiral on it. No, I guess that's probably uh, electron microscopy. You know, and the fact, I don't think I don't you know. see a virus with a light <laughs> microscope, so okay. Um, the infection with pseudocalpox virus requires exposure to an infected cow. Um, so humans are often the reason this virus spreads so rapidly between a herd. If an infected cow is touched by a human and they continue touching other cows, the virus will spread. Um, cows cannot form an immunity to the virus, so it's likely to return to your herd. The clinical signs of pseudocalpox are small, red, raised sores on the teats and udder. Uh, they will then turn into vesicles, scabs, and nodules on the teats and udder. Um, the sores are often ring or horseshoe shaped, and it is important to look at a sample under a microscope to determine if it is pseudocalpox and not something else, like regular cowpox or even just a cut on the teat or udder. And that's kind of shows you the scab over here, and once the scab comes off, it'll look kind of like a circle or a horseshoe. When humans are infected, it is known as milker's nodule. Um, milkers and farm workers will be the most likely to get infected. In very rare cases, a slaughterhouse employee or a vet could also be infected. Um, in humans, the virus creates small raised flat top spots that will get, begin to appear one or two weeks after exposure to an infected cow. They'll start out looking almost like warts and then they'll harden and become lumps. These lumps are very mild, but they can cause some pain and discomfort. There's really no treatment for it. They kind of just go away on their own after a few weeks. And then humans can um, gain immunity to it. So once you get it once, hopefully you'll get it again. Uh, the treatment in cows is pretty simple. Um, once a scab forms, you take it off. And then an astringent disinfectant can be applied. So astringent disinfectants are um, a chemical that shrinks or constricts body tissue. It coagulates skin proteins that hardens um, the skin to protect the healing layer. An example of astringent disinfectant in cattle is chlorhexidine solution. Um, you can also use that to treat like any cuts or anything like that. <coughs> and then emollient teat sprays and dips will help reduce the number of bacteria and viruses that are found on the teat. It does this by healing damaged skin found in the sores. So that's kind of like a day-to-day -day thing that you do just to kind of prevent it. In humans, the best way to prevent getting milker's nodule is to wear gloves when milking or handling a cow's udder. Uh, this is especially important when a cow is infected with the virus. It is also important to wash all milking equipment after an infected cow so it does not spread to another cow and then also to yourself. And it's probably a good idea to milk that cow last. Mm -hmm. And then in cows, the prevention is a little more difficult because once the virus starts on a farm, it often spreads and it takes a long time to get rid of it. So it is essential to follow sound milking hygiene practices like effective teat dipping and proper disinfection of the milking units between cows. Okay, questions, comments about pseudo cowpox. Very interesting. I've heard of cowpox. There, when she was talking, it reminded me of the story of how, I can't remember if it was in England, someplace over in Europe or England, where uh, the milking maids, they used to have like milking maids, they were milking the cows, and somebody made the observation that those women were immune to another kind of pox. And that's kind of one of the discoveries, uh, the pillars of immunology where uh, they were, you know, they were 
somewhat protective because you made a point that the humans gain immunity, but the cows don't to the same virus. But they found out that those milking maids were, I think they were like immune to the regular pox that would go through a human population, which was very interesting. I think that's very fun. Anybody else? Comments? Questions? Okay.